and you get light going here. That's better. I can close this window too. Makes it a little bit less crazy in the background. How's everyone doing? Kathy, that's actually good that the paint is on and off better than on, on, on and on, huh? I just put new strings on this. Still has to go to the shop, so. I hate putting new strings on it right before I take it in to get worked on, but. I've got a loose bracing, I think. Right, right there, I think. Which is no good. But Nora can fix it. Your pants confirmed. I need a thumb pick. So we got some people here. Hey, there's Tom. <laughs> uh, Zen is here. That's just a little finger style piece that I wrote a while ago that I'm trying to kind of get down. I want this was one of the ones that I might put on the recording. The hard part is not trying to play those in straight like eight uh, triplets. Ba 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 ba. Not not like I got to really make sure the timing is good. So you got to hold them. I want to memorize it before I actually record it because then I feel like I'll really have it. Okay, let's see who we got here. We're going to continue with strumming and, uh, and or grooving. More strumming than grooving today. Um, like I said, I'm glad to hear Kathy. It says, uh, 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 let's see. Um, all right. So Jim and Bonnie are here. I was asking Jim and Bonnie to have a fight on uh, on the live chat. That would be pretty funny, but uh, they said they don't fight. So they're like my wife and I. We never fight. Um, let's see. <laughs> Why would I fight? I'm gonna lose. It's just pretty much pretty much my my take on it. Because uh, I, I yeah because I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm always wrong, which is true. Uh, Vito's here. Uh, did we determine where you are, Avito? I forget where you said you were from or where you're coming. Because you said it's pretty late where you are. Um, <clears throat> I may do some 6-8. Six, 6-8, uh, <clears throat> six, I've got to do some um, graphics for 6-8. I don't have any graphics that I could find. I, I, I've been busy uh, since, we, since I signed off yesterday. It's been pretty much nonstop until just signing on now. Um, and uh, had a migraine this morning, which kind of slowed me down. So I've got uh, my Starbucks with a shot of espresso. I'm, and I also, I want to design a coffee mug. I think, I think it should say, um, like you said, uh, who was it that suggested? Um, th there will be no quiz on this uh, or something to that effect. <laughs> there will be no quiz at the end of the week on this. Is that too much? It's got to be a little bit snappier, so I think I think just simply there will there will be no quiz on this. Um, and then it, should I put that in quotes? And then should it say Pro Guitar Secret? Should it say Tom Straley? And people are like, why why do you have a mug that has a quote by Tom Strahl? <laughs> so anyway, um, so anyway, I'm trying to figure that out. Diane's here. Tom Beck is here. Ed is here. Pepper's here. Hi, Pepper. 
Uh, Bob Schumann. Uh, let's see. Ben is here. AJ, the scribe. I don't see Gary. Keith is here. Well, everybody's here. Uh, Zen is here. Charles Logan's here. Good to see you, Charles. Bruce is here. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. Who else? We got everybody's pretty much. Oh, Jim Horst, I see you. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to. Oh, Rogers here. Pepper confirmed pants. Uh, let's see. The question is, are any of you wearing pants right now? Uh, Peter Anderson is here. Another wonderful day in the world of lockdowns. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Beth has got some work though. She's really happy. Uh, Walter's here. Hey, Walter. Good job yesterday yourself, man. We got through it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. I I think my, my I'm not sure. My migraine started in the back of my neck last night, and I should have taken some meds last night, but I didn't. I just went to bed, and I it woke me up this morning at 4 a.m., and then I couldn't go back to sleep. Erasmus, hello. Uh, India, that's right. Okay, yeah, you told me that. Um, let's see. All good. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Walter, don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, you're wearing pants. They're good. Glad to hear about Hook J. Um, okay, so yeah, we're gonna. I, I want to do. I want to do some six eight, six, eight stuff because six eight so much fun. Uh, one of the things I love about six eight, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. In fact, I'm gonna. I was just doing a session. I was just working on a, um, last night I was working on it. This morning I was working on it with the headache. Um, but it, um, it hopefully, hopefully I'll, I'll get it. Um, but we were trying a bunch of different things. I was working with a composer, trying a bunch of different things to try to, for a TV show theme for a new TV show. So, um, so it, the, um, um, the the thing was is we were experimenting with all sorts of different sounds. So the hope is that I we you know between we tried to, I I did I think I did ten different things, ten different instruments played different ways, um, you know, but not even just in different instruments. Like I did, um, I can't play the melody or play the music, but um, I used this. That's why this guitar is out. And it was interesting because I wanted a 12-string sound, a uh, very metallic sound, but the, the melody was really high, like up here. And you'll notice only on the bottom four strings are the octaves. The top two strings are unison. So, right? So I had, I had, I had to play it up, I had to play the whole thing up here like this so it was pretty difficult uh but i wanted all the string all the notes to have an octave up i was like could it be possible to have a true 12 string where everything was octave up and i'm just like there's no way i mean i think if i put a seven on the b string i could probably tune that up and because this is a this is a nine i think that g and that's really high and that one breaks all the time. You imagine if you had an octave up? But I remember uh, there was a jazz guitar player who had a seven string guitar. We talked about this a couple days ago. Someone said, how do you string a seven string? And uh, 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 he, uh, he, he, you know, usually, usually when you see a seven string, there's a lower B string. But sometimes you see a seven string with a higher um, A string up here. But that was one jazz guitar player uh, back in the 50s and 60s, and I can't think of his name. Somebody probably knows it. And he would play with a seven string, and he would do chord melodies, and he'd have this really high note. It was really cool, uh, but it was really hard to replicate. Um, and so that made it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more difficult um, to figure out what he was doing. But anyway, so that I, I don't think I could ever have a pure 12 string where I had all the strings would be have octave pairs. I could do a baritone that way, but that doesn't give me the range that I want. So, because I wanted to be able to play here, but I had, which is fine. I mean, if you if I played classical style, which I didn't actually do, it might be a little easier. But that's just the inside of the thinking. So, um, six eight though, I do want to do some six eight stuff, Avito. Um,
So I want to do uh, so six eight. The great thing about six eight is you can. There's so many little fun little variations, and usually when we do a pattern, we keep the pattern going, and you just kind of keep doing the pattern, um, and that's the group. But for some reason. Every time I play in 6-8, it doesn't seem... I don't know if it's the style of music, because there's a lot of um, Latin feels in 6, and there's a lot of the Celtic feels in 6. And for some reason, you know, like you can do... You can do the whole song that way, but it never sounds bad to mix it up a little bit. So that's kind of where, um, uh, that's where I want to go with six eight. Is I want to show you a bunch of the variations, and so I want to. I have to write them out and um, uh, notate them, and and hopefully, um, uh, again, I, I'm trying to sneak in a little bit of music notation knowledge to you. Flamenco definitely has flamenco definitely has a lot of six eight feels in it, um, and and the although the rumba patterns are basically in four, the the rumba pattern, you know the. Uh, the those are basically in four um, but there's a lot a lot of the different styles of flamenco music are in six or twelve in fact they have a compass compass the the metronome for flamenco players um, and it's crazy it's got 12 it's like a clock and some of the some of them start like some of the 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 uh the grooves uh, start on beat two or something, and you think beat, it's not. It's so weird, and some of them start on beat eleven, and it's very complex. It's very very complex, and every region, like in in Andalusia, where in Spain, where uh, it's a big part of Spain, every city has its own kind of uh, uh, style of music named for it. So I, when I was learning all these different, uh, like the Granados and the, um, I forget some of the others, but uh, I was learning all these different styles. And then I look at the map and I'm like, wait a minute, there's Granados and there's this thing, you know. And I'm realizing, oh, wait a minute. So that's why it's called that, because it was probably from that region. So, um, And then, so what we were doing was we were looking at this groove here and playing just very simple. Um, you know, and we were using E chord and E sus. Um, I, I had you using two chords. I can write these out right now. We'll change, change the guitar so we can take a sip. Um, I don't think we could fit... If I got a mug this size, you might be able to fit the Tom Command Sips. <laughs> Gary, I think we could fit them all on them, like a mug this size. But I was trying to design a mug uh, this morning and trying to figure out what to do there. So uh, I'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, 12 string flamenco, right? <laughs> I actually could do that would be pretty cool. I'm touching my neck. I'm, judgment call. I need a judgment call on that. Is that touching my face? No, 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 it's here too, I see. Thank you, Bavar, glad to see you. Uh, just making sure I've said hello to everybody, I think I have. I'm, I think there's more people on than have said hi, and I. some people are watching like on their phones and you can't do the um, chat, I don't think, on your phone, can you? Okay, so the E chord um, is this, if you don't know, 022100, and then E sus. And so what reason I'm, I'm having you do these two chords, they're very easy to go back and forth from, okay? Um, and uh, that's the reason, and then uh, I want you to have a change on beat one so you can keep track of where the downbeat is, okay? Avito, you asked me a question. I'm not sure what you meant by it. Do I clip off the strings? Uh, I just changed, guitar, changed strings. I clip them right off at the... Um, yeah, Walter, I don't rock on percussion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm really good at quantizing. <laughs> Highlight and then hit Q. <laughs> I wish I could do that with my plane. Actually, no, I don't. Well, we got 41 on right now. Okay, but yeah, so this way, when we're playing this groove, we can hear where one is. One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, I'm going E sus E. You don't need to take your first finger off, but you can. Oh, you, 
can, oh, Kathy's on her phone and she can still live chat. I didn't know that. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so we, we were talking about that. We've done, let's see, I went here and we did different um, holds uh, where we turned, we instead of playing eighth notes, we played quarter notes on the different four different beats. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. And each one of these is its own unique pattern. Um, any of them could be totally used in a song. Some of them are really cool. I really like, like for example, the, uh, the second one. Let's see. And of course, we can use <laughs> the combinatorics and come up with all sorts of patterns that have are very minimalistic. We could have one and two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. And what that would be is basically two eighth notes, and the second eighth note would be tied to a dotted half note. A half note is worth two whole beats. A dotted half note, a dot adds 50%. So then a dotted half note would be worth three whole beats. So that, that groove, which is technically a groove. Two, three, four, two, three, four. It leaves a lot of space for other stuff to go on. Or it might be something that's happening in the music. Um, that would be not necessarily as much of a groove as much as a, a moment in a song where you're like, this would be like a. Might be a, an example if you can keep time you don't need to keep your arm moving you'll still see people do that like if you're watching musicians uh, live on stage you know singer songwriters whatever if they, even if they go they may still be it's kind of like tapping your foot your arm can be just like tapping your foot I had students though that would tap their foot only when they hit so they would hit tap tap <laughs> tap tap <laughs> that's it you know <laughs> So they, they didn't get the concept of you got to just keep the foot going, okay? So if you're going to tap your foot, don't make it match your hand. Make, make it be the, be the metronome, okay? I don't have a camera down on my foot. Some guys have multiple. I can do multiple cameras, but I only have the one. <laughs> um, so now I should get some, like, jean, like, cut off or some, like, uh, what are they called? They're, they're go, like, just below the knee so I could have... Technically half shorts or whatever those are called. Anyway. Okay, so yeah, so there's a million variations we can do. All we did here was we just turned the quarter notes into, uh, the downbeats into quarter notes. And we those all created different. And then we did, then we we turned the um, and of the quarter notes into, into, I mean, and of the beats into quarter notes. And we ended up with these fields. And these are actually very usable fields. These are really nice sounding fields. Like that first one is one and and three and four and one. And Walter, just keep your arm moving. Should be very easy. It's your hi-hat. That's the first one. The second one is one and two and, and four and one and two. Very useful. Yeah, Bavar, I can I can do that. I call it a snare hit. Thank you, Gary. I can do a snare hit uh, on downstrokes. Very difficult to do on upstrokes. Um, so if you want a syncopated snare drum, you might have to do uh, all eighth notes with downstrokes. You know, so. uh, but basically, the uh, the chuck, as you call it, is that what you call it? Or mute the strings. It, so, so for example, on um, the second groove, which is, I could put a snare hit on two and four like this. And we we're gonna we we're gonna get to that eventually, uh, but it is it is, takes a little bit of time. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm. Uh, you can practice it without any any chord at all. That way you have all the strings open so you can see if you're getting it. But basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of making contact uh, with the side of my hand on the strings before I, I do the strum. It's, it's, I don't even remember learning how to do it, to be honest. It's been so long. Um, and like, you know, with, with some things like...
that kind of, uh, with finger picking. I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the strings with the, with my fist, basically the tops of my fingernails. And that's a really cool trick because you can also, you can still have the snare hit and a chord at the same time. When I do this, um, oh, the, oh, the, yesterday the recording went well. Walter did a good job. <laughs> yeah, it went fine. Uh, it was a little tough. The first service was tough because we were trying to sync with a Zoom choir, not live, but we, they recorded a Zoom choir and they were using a click and singing along with it. And we had to kind of figure out what arrangement they sang with. Because a lot of times when you're doing worship music, well, when you're playing in any music, if you can, uh, the worship leader's kind of in charge. And if the worship leader wants to do another chorus or extend the bridge, you know, um, they usually give you a signal, a hand signal of some kind, or they'll give you a vocal telegraph of some kind. And I can't do that when, you, when you've got a pre-recorded thing you're playing along with. So that was, took us a minute to kind of make sure we were lined up. But other than that, um, so when I'm doing the snare hit this way, I can't really get a chord at the same time, right? Because the, the, the actual snare hit is being made by the pick. But with, th with this, uh, it's, it's the difference between flesh of your fingers plucking the strings. And I'm, I'm kind of hitting the top of the guitar. I love that. feel it's such a happy feel <laughs> it's such a happy feel but it took a while to get and I think I kind of got it believe it or not I got it that's a I mean Paul McCartney did it um, I, he did it on Blackbird kind of um, but I never never noticed that it wasn't until like John Mayer when I was trying to figure out one of John Mayer's tunes off of my favorite record of his uh, which was his probably his biggest record though one it's a Oh, what's that song? I'm out of tune because it's brand new strings. Where's my tuner? Ah, of course, it's on the 12 string. I should play the 12 string though. 12 string sounds great for 6 8. Um, so, anyway. The snare hit is something we're going to talk about. I did a video on it. Um, well, really, well, they're brand new strings. I haven't even stretched them out, to be honest. Um, I did a video um, called The Snare Hit on my strumming and grooves lessons. Let me, let me put a link up to the playlist so you guys can do some. There's also some 6-8 stuff in there. Um, but I, we're going to do 6-8 here, I think, too. Maybe tomorrow if I can get my act together and create some... Uh, Create some uh, some you know examples on um, finale, like th what these are here. Okay. Um, ba -da -ba -da -boo 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 -boo. Uh, Bavar, you know that song. What song was it? <laughs> well, I guess it was kind of like uh, it was pseudo. Um, uh, what's that beaver tune that I wrote with him? Uh, shoot, it almost made the record. I'm bummed that it didn't make the record. It may still get released. Um, all right, so my playlists are right here. And yeah, so I just want to put up a link here. Oh, I also have to do a link for the uh, Discord site. So you guys, have, there's a Discord uh, page for this. And um, the, the chats continue there. People put up examples of things they're they like, they're, they're working on. There we go, strumming and grooving lessons. Um, I can do specifically, here's the whole playlist. I can give you specifically um, I absolute pitch, maybe. I don't have perfect pitch. Um, no, I don't have perfect pitch. Uh, absolute pitch, eh, maybe. The difference, perfect pitch is you hear a note, 
um, and you know what it is. I, you know, I, I sometimes can pick out notes if I hear, you know, hear a note. I mean, I don't think you can learn perfect pitch later. Um, I mean, we were just having this discussion the other night with my friend from England. He's got perfect pitch. A composer that I work with. Oh, uh, you know, well, I could do that. Two broken thumbs of Yahoo. I mean, if YouTube lets me. Um, but I don't mind. I don't mind bringing it up here because I don't think people will see it in the description. Um, so here's the here's a in my invite people link. It kind of it kind of is um, like waiting on the world to change. Um, yeah. Uh, that, oh yeah. That's all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, what that was. But there's a song in that on that record where he kind of does. <laughs> Kathy, yeah. <laughs> I want to be heard, but I don't want to. I don't want to hear other people. <laughs> so yeah, so this is what we did yesterday. We worked on those, and then we did the accents, and then we added to the accents uh, thing. I do have some new ones. Let me see. Maybe I can do uh, I can I can duplicate this. Duplicate. There it is. No, call it three. Um, and then I can see if I, I wonder if I can import. Let's see. Dang it. There we go. Okay, I can delete those like that. Okay, now hopefully I didn't just delete them from here. Nope, they're still there. Okay. Um, now I think, I wonder, eh, no, I can't. I have to into, into, uh, do them one at a time. But I, uh, mm, let's see, where are we? Uh, I got so many of these, I'm running out of titles. <laughs> I mean, I'm naming them on my end. It does, you don't see the names of these little mini files, but I've got so many of them. Uh, I think it's just, I think I'm on 17. All right, let's see if I can find one. And we can work on one. It, I wanna find one that has a different, that has two accents, okay? So that's that's my thinking. We've, we've got, um, we've been doing, you know, one accent. And so let's find, let's do one that's got a couple accents. And it is hard to see. I know I put them in here. Where are you? Ah, here's, oh, here they are. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, I think, ooh, this one. This would be a fun one to work on. I mean, it's not the easiest of the ones I uploaded, but let me do this one. Okay, a little different looking. I don't have the down up on there, um, a different font, but um, the accents on this one, you can see are on beat on one, the and of two, and on four, okay? And so that would sound like this. Um. You can almost hear a crash cymbal on each of them. Kind of like a Coldplay song, right? It's almost a Coldplay rhythm. That's that rhythm. So I'll, I've got the groove set up, um, our drum groove. Uh, Vil is asking me, um, Avito, sorry. Avito is asking me, when you work with an artist, uh, in case you work with them and the song doesn't make it, do you still get paid? It depends. If, I, if I'm writing, no. If I'm, um, and that's why I don't like leaked songs because leaked songs typically are not leaked by the artist. They're leaked by someone who got access to somebody's phone illegally or something and they got a hold of it or someone's hard drive or someone's computer that was working on the song um i don't know or someone sometimes some people working on the song intentionally leak it because they're upset that the song didn't get released i've never done that um but songs do get or phones get lost left behind in a bar that's happened um 
but the uh, uh, if if I'm called in to play on something, uh, then yeah. If somebody if they call me in to play on a song, I've been called in to play on songs for artists, and the songs don't get released. They still have to pay me. But if I'm writing, if I'm submitting songs, and they record, write stuff to it, and the song never gets released, no. I, I'm in those situations. I'm working for the back end. So hey, Reed, good to see you. All right, so uh, let me pull up this drum groove, and we're I think we're at. Uh, Like I said, 82 now, we're at a different tempo. Um, and what we should do is just do E to E sus. And accent just one. One. Do the end of just do the end of two, so it'll be like this one and two, and one and two, and three and four, and one and two, and three and four, and one and two, and three and four, and one and two, four and one and two, good to see you, Tim. Okay, so we're just doing that middle accent right there. Okay. <laughs> I even said the word accent with an accent. It's like I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Okay. So um, so what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to put the accent on one and the end of two. It sounds like this. Boom. Boom. Like that. Change chords. Three, four, one, and Jesus. Now the other thing you could do too is you could do all downstrokes. Um, totally different feel. More of like a chug, 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 chug. One. So try that. And by doing all downstrokes, you just made yourself available to 16 notes. So you could do 16. So let's try to get those two. And now let's go back to down up. So the pattern on the right, no accents. And three and four and one and two and three and now accent one. One. And the end of two. One. And one. And three and four. And. Okay, now let's try to get that four. drums for a second so you can hear it without the drums in case that's confusing things I'll do it fast you don't even have to accent one because one is almost naturally kind of accented anyway in music so you could do Um, but I just thought, okay, well, that's a fun one because we did all the accents. We did all those other ones where we just did the accents on different beats. There we did 
uh, of one, the end of one, two, the end of two, three, the end of three, and four, and the end of four. So we did all those, um, and that gave us uh, some some experience. Again, this is kind of particularly these four right here are kind of an academic, what I would call an academic exercise. They're an exercise uh, of doing all the possible variations you can do so that you're prepared for any scenario. Um, you, and, and some of the scenarios may never show up. But like I, like I said, a lot of jazz players would do that. Charlie Parker would go to, out on the Brooklyn Bridge and just practice scales all night. He could do it at, in his apartment um, because, you know, he'd disturb his neighbors. So he went out on the Brooklyn Bridge and practiced scales. But he did all his variations, all the different kinds of scales. He practiced them up and down and over, all around, inside out, every possible variation. And I'm sure he did it all in his head because he didn't. He wasn't going to bring a music stand out there and keep notes or anything like that on the Brooklyn Bridge. So I wish there were pictures of him out. That would be so cool if there were photographs of, of Charlie Parker on the Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, gosh, that would just be amazing. There, there might be, but I don't know. The people didn't carry around cell phones back then. <laughs> now, if it were happening today, yeah, maybe. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. All right, what else is going on? Let's see. Now we have. Um, I can do it. I can add another accent. Let's see. What else? Actually, I, that was the hardest one of the of the ones I uploaded. Um, but I do have. We have this. We have this. Okay. So we talked about electric grooves. Um, ah, touch my nose. Take a sip. Cheers. I'll get my uh, logos lined up. There we go. So um, this one was our electric groove, right? I think I uploaded kind of one of the most common ones. Um, so we can work on this. I'm trying to figure out a way. Well, we can do this with a, um, um, I think this will work. Let's see if I can find it. You can do this with, I mean, I like doing these with bar chords because what, what I want to do is, um, yeah, I think it's this one here. All right. So again, I didn't write the down note, but that's, that's uh, kind of implied, I think, in there. Okay. So you check this out. So you see the 16 16th notes. Right in groupings of four, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, um, and notice where the accents are. The first four accents, you, actually, you could think of it as the first five accents are every third sixteenth note. One, two, three, and so e of one e and, and then there's an accent on a, and there's two e, and then accent on and, and then and three or a three, and then e. It's um, I'm going to do it on acoustic so you can hear it. But basically, what I was using was the E9 chord. You see that? Um, I, I, I wish I could figure out how I did it. Normally, what I would do is the note head you see there, the slash, I would have on the accents. Where, where the notes are not accented, I would have turned the note head to an X. Um, and I used to be able to do that on old Finale, and I can't find that in a new version of Finale. So I hate it when they change software programs and you can't figure it out. Okay, the chord I'm using there was using there was an E9 chord. Um, <coughs> or as I call it, the, um, uh, the James Brown chord. Um, seven, six, seven, 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 I think that's right. Boom, like that, okay? So, ah, my nose itches. I think cat's shedding everywhere, so it's just cat hair everywhere. All right, so, but do 
do it. You could do a sixteenth note pattern with an open chord and accent those. It would sound like this. And I call that the free range groove. Um, I did a video on that. It's also in the um, it's also in the uh, strumming groove uh, list that I just posted. Uh, the playlist of strummings and grooves. Um, and the free range groove, I call it that just, it was my name. I call it that because it just sounds like you're out on the, uh, out in the wild west riding a horse. And it's like, cause, cause when I first heard this groove, it was on a bank, uh, no, it was on a Wells Fargo commercial back in the eighties. And it was, or maybe it was nineties or something. It was like, <laughs> When I do that pattern, sometimes I won't do the double accent at the end. I'll go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, I'm not going four, four E and a. I'm not doing that last accent. Um, sometimes when you want to hammer at home, it sounds good to do that last accent. So here, I'll do it without the accent, just on an E chord to E sus, so you can keep track of where one is. Um, and then I'll do it with the double accent at the end. But here, here is with without the accent. Now here's with double accent. Of like boom boom you know just kind of punches you into the next bar so that's kind of the purpose of that uh, but you don't always have to do that last accent same thing with this that's without the accent at the end so this is only one two three four five accents and how I'm creating the accent here is I'm squeezing the chord so that the strings are making contact with the frets and it creates an E9 chord. But the rest of the time, I'm letting the strings up off the frets, but I'm keeping my fingers on the string, thus creating this muted sound. Yeah, totally like Pinball Wizard, I think, would be. He does that little triplet at the end, though, doesn't he? I'm gonna get a takedown notice <laughs> from YouTube. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. Um, the uh... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a. I don't know. I mean, you, you say ten years, uh, Bruce, but <clears throat> um, to be honest, uh, <clears throat> I played pinball wizard in my band in junior high. Now, granted, you know, junior high kids have the. <laughs> insane ability to learn just like be informational sponges and it's you know a lot easier to learn stuff when you're young than when you're older so i get that but if i was able to do that in junior high now the the triplet thing that's different the triplet thing too is interesting because we've talked about this before if you have an odd number of strums all right and you only move your arm when you're strumming you're going to end up with an upstroke on the downbeat well that's exactly what happens in that feel so you have to reset yourself after the downbeat. It's really weird. And that takes some time to get used to. But if you, so in other words, I've got 16 sixteenth notes there. But if I take the last two sixteenths, those last two, that and the four, not the four and the E, but the and a uh of four, you see those last two? And I substitute those for trip, if I substitute triplets in there, so a triplet, so three notes in place of two, Da 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 da. Let's see. Da 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 is basically what's happening. One. So it's four E triplet. Four E triplet. Four E triplet. Da da. It's basically what's happening. Um. Uh. The um. Yeah. Funk a little bit. Let's see. 
<laughs> no. T two broken thumbs, no. <laughs> Although I did have a band in junior high called Crosswind. So I guess you could take a sip on that. Take a half a sip because it's junior high, not high school. And this was an actual band. This is not me joking around. Um, I can also hear the truss rod rattling around in here. And maybe that's what's causing the noise. I don't know. We'll find out when I get this work done. Um, so, uh, rub my nose again. So the, um, well, and I'm also, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm drinking a coffee with a shot of espresso in it right now. So that's why I'm especially happy and playing all fast tempos right now. That's why we're doing 16 notes right now. <laughs> um, but basically the way you can get to 16th notes, like I thought you could do the four and one and two and three and four. If you get that down, Um, then do that same pattern with all down strokes. Almost easier to be even with down strokes. Like here you might swing. But when you go to all down strokes, those eighth notes tend to even out. have that down you can sometimes get the point where you you can get to that 16th of That's the beginning, but the, then the, the accent thing, I actually did a video on that. Look, so I have it in that playlist. Um, the free range groove, is this that is that groove for acoustic guitar, is what I call it. But I use that groove a lot for funk guitar, like Leo said. Um, okay, so here's that. Okay, close that. Summon groove, blah, 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 standard folk, summon lesson, Celtic. Yeah, here's the 6 8 one. Um, let me open that. Um, or one of them anyway, the snare. Why is that in there twice? That's so weird. Um, old one on strumming the 6-8. 12, three. the free range group, here it is right here. I really break this down. I don't know if it's, if it's makes it easier to learn or not. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, I've got 71 thumbs up on it and no thumbs down. Um, oops. Okay. So I guess people liked it. I guess it was getting the point across, but this is that. So bookmark that and watch that later. If you're interested in learning that, um, um, yeah, Peter, I think if you can get the down, the, the all downstroke eighth note feel down, you can get the 16th note feel. And also keep in mind 16th notes aren't necessarily faster than 8th notes, right? At the same tempo, yes, they're exactly twice as fast. So if we're at 80 beats per minute, um, then they're exactly twice as fast. However, if you're playing 8th notes at 120, that's the exact same speed as 16th notes at 60 beats per minute, okay? So just because you see a lot of notes doesn't necessarily mean it's really, really fast. The tempo determines that. Um, and then once you're set, if the tempo is the same through the whole song, then if you see eighth notes and 16th notes, and then you can assume that, yes, 16th notes are going to be twice as fast as eighth notes. Now, okay, I was, so I was talking about that little triplet thing. Um, and I, I would do that on electric, too. Uh, my guitar's tuned down a half step, and I need it to be, because i got to do something later today. This 
I'm trying to get it, get it used to being down and have stuff so I can play this song. Um, but but. Um, but. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. It's so it's still quiet. If I did that on this guitar, you can hear it, but. What's happening though, so if I substitute, I'm finishing my thought from like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, if I, um, we, I could put a squirrel on the other side of the mug. <laughs> so the side facing you will have a squirrel on it out there on the other side of the mug. We'll say there's, there won't be a quiz on it in the morning. I could use, I could use Bonnie's, uh, logo. Um, let's see the, uh, so if I turn two notes into three notes, instead of having 16 notes in a bar, I'm going to have 17 notes in a bar, which means getting to that next bar. I'm going to have a, an upstroke on the downbeat, right? So that's where you got to turn yourself around. Now, the way, one way to get away from that is to do a full beat of triplets. So instead of substituting um, three, a triplet for the last two notes, you'd substitute two triplets for the last four notes. So in slow motion, it would be, let's see if I can do it in slow motion, but... There is one, two, and three E, and a four E, and a four triplet, and triplet, one, and a two E, and a three E, and a four triplet, and triplet, one, okay? If I start there, I, I have, so I've substituted six for four, so I have 16, uh, take away four, add six, you end up with 18. So you have 18, oh, I touched my face again, gosh darn it, I started to drool. <laughs> So I was wiping away the drool. It's like when I was in junior high taking lessons and I'd be concentrating so hard that the drool would just go over my lip and right under my guitar right here. My teacher would give me such grief over that. I was so embarrassed. Gosh. Um, but we have those, so we end up with 18 notes and therefore we can, we're, we're on the, the down, uh, a down strum on the downbeat, which makes sense. But if we do, Watch this. So what happens if we have the 17? So if we only do, um, I need a sippy cup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need one of those hats with the straws that we just <laughs> put them in our mouths. Um, Jim and Rick, what's the great news? I missed something. Oh, oh, awesome. Your wife, Rick's wife is eat. Okay, so I'm since so she did she have uh, work done on her heart or her veins or something like that. Um, oh, thank you, two broken thumbs. We'll be in touch. Um, yeah, we need this. I was just looking though. It's a Teespring is the. Um, kind of the vendor of choice. And I think that the fee for the cups are like $16 and I get like $7 or something like that. So it's, you know, obviously they, you know, they're, they, I want them to make money. I want YouTube to make money. Here's the, <laughs> I want Guitar Center to make money for me. I want them there next year. You know, if I, if I go in there and haggle the, da, down, so they're only making a dollar on a guitar, where well, they're not going to be here next year. Uh, any guitar stores that way. You, you can ha you haggle your way all the way down to, you know, so they're not making any money. Well, what's the point of that? Um, I was, you know, my mechanic loves me because I tell him that. I said, yeah, I want you to make money off me. because can you tell all my other customers that? I go, yeah, no, it's like, I love my mechanic. And so it's like, I want him there next year. You know, if you can't make money, what's the point? Um, how much is an average guitar serving? I don't know what that means. Oh, and Bruce, thank, was it Bruce? Uh, somebody asked the question. It get, the thing the thing gets so fast. Okay, so Avito asked, uh, "Do you mean a guitar setup?" Okay, so is that what you mean? It just depends. I mean, every guy's different. I mean, I think my guy charges eighty-five bucks or something for a setup. 
Uh, my guy's a little on the expensive side. Uh, he's got a pretty exclusive clientele, so he can kind of charge whatever he wants. But I've always used him, and he works pretty fast for me. Sometimes you can have a guitar for a couple months, but usually he turns it around pretty quick for me. Um, so, let's see. Uh, punitive for face. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, okay, so I'm trying to catch up here. So, it, it, was that your question, if you don't servicing? You said, oh, servicing. Okay, so you changed the word. Uh, yeah, because I was serving. Yeah, servicing. Uh, I know it's it's. Um, yeah, so it just depends. I mean, I you're in India, so I'm assuming that in India you could you know it's a lot cheaper uh, than say in Los Angeles, where it's probably going to be the most expensive because the rents are expensive, things like that. There's you know. Um, so anyway, so what happens when I do the, when I do the, the the triplets on the last two sixteenth notes? There again, I end up with seventeen total strums in a bar, which means I'm going to end up on an upstroke with a downbeat. So then you have to turn yourself around. So it's basically like, so it's one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. So you just kind of you're just going to have to pause, and so that upstroke you're just going to have to wait until the next downstroke. So it actually your arm stops being a pure metronome. Obviously, it stopped being a pure metronome when you went to the triplet anyway. Um, so because you've opened that can of worms, you're going to have to open the other can of worms, which is go ahead and hold your hand until you get to that downbeat. So it's like... Um, so it's, it's hard to do that slow, but... Yeah, it's hard to do that slow. Yeah, it's hard. I, I don't know why I can't do it slow, but I can do it fast. Because it's it's just a, it's like a reset. You almost have to sit, hit a reset every bar. Now, if I did a full beat, like a one beat of triplets, then I've got 18 strums in the bar. So it would sound like this. You know. If you start on the on beat four, you can do triplets there, and it, it's going to be you're substituting six notes for four, so you still end up with an even number. So you can, um, so you can still um, uh, keep your keep your down strum on the downbeat. So that's real advanced stuff, though. Um, if you're if you're there, I'm not sure why you're watching these lessons, but. <laughs> But hey, thanks for watching the lessons. Okay, so in fact, um, I'm going to change the guitar so you can. But the, but the free range groove sounds great on 12 string. And I'll use a lighter pick. I'll use the 88 Dunlop here. Spanish flavor when you really add those 16th notes. Um, I can also do it, so, so you get to take a sip, and you're going to get to take another sip because I'm going to pick up the... Now, I need to work on this. I need to work on this so I can do that feel with my hands, not a pick, but... So like... Fun feel though. Just gotta play along with like 10 Gypsy King records and then I'll be done. I'll have it. Um, so you guys are getting a lot of sips. So let's see, do I have any questions here? Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, my Martin setup, including action, cleaning, change of strings, was about 65 bucks US. 
Not including the cost of drinks, right? So yeah, so it's not too. Where are you located, Bob? <laughs> yeah, the rules are located up there. Uh, pants confirmed. Yeah, pants were confirmed very early in this. You're late to the game. Um, but cheers. I'm going to take a sip. <laughs> That's a gulp. If I grab a 12 string. Uh, that neck looks like an old 2x4. Which, which guitar is that? AJ, the 12 string? The, this thing is beautiful. This, look, at the, look at the wood, the maple on the back of this thing. And the sides. Just gorgeous guitar. I, and, and I love Taylor 12 strings. Uh, the Taylor, they even say this. They, they really start a guitar with a neck. They want the guitar to play great. Um, and so th when, you're, we're, when you're forced to play a 12 string, and I say forced because I don't normally grab a 12 string. I have it out because I, the composer I was working with said, hey, how would this melody sound like on 12 string guitar? Um, and so I, I went ahead and uh, played the melody on 12 string. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work playing 12 strings, so. Okay, see you, see you tomorrow, Kathy. You take care of yourself, okay? Um, yeah, oh, two thumbs, you're gonna have to go get another cup, yeah. Oh, you're near Toledo, okay. Oh, that's right, uh, um, I think, yeah, because my I told you my uncle, my, uh, my aunt and uncle lived in Dayton. I have a cousin still in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and he used to work at, um, to, I don't know how close that is to Toledo, now that I think about it. Um, I think of T Toledo and Dayton being fairly close together, but my, my uncle worked at uh, the um, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. He was an aeronautical engineer, so he did a lot of stuff there. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, so having a good a guitar setup will really help you with... Um, you know, it makes a guitar easier to play. So many... People give up the guitar because the guitar that they, they're learning on, they're trying to learn on, is so poorly set up or such a cheap instrument. I mean, that almost happened with me because my second guitar was a K-12 string. Um, I wonder if I could even find one of those. Let me see if I can find on uh, Reverb. Reverb's a great place to look at gear. Uh, it's also a great place to find out what something's worth. Um, you know, if you're like, oh, I wonder what my guitar's worth, you can get a pretty good sense of it because re eBay can be tough because that's like... The asking price could be way off, you know, or or it could be really, really low because they're expecting to get a lot of bids. Um, but I would be, well, we'll see if any of them there. Um, I see some K guitars, but no 12 strings. And K, these are new ones. Yeah, the K reissue, which is funny, they're like 1400 bucks. I mean, I think my... 12 string that I bought was like, I want to say it was uh, $120. I can't remember. And I think I bought it or maybe I got it for my birthday. I may have gotten it for my birthday. I mean, I was 11 maybe. So I don't think I would have saved up enough money to buy it at 11. Um, but I, um, uh, uh, but I, I find that, uh, um, when I got the guitar, I got it because I, I really love John Denver and he played 12 string on a lot of songs. So I wanted to play John Denver songs. And it was, it was one of those things. I think everybody buys a 12 string for the same reason, because they pick it up and they play even one chord on it. And they go, Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And they go, I got to get one of these. And then it's like, uh, you know, that guitar, when I had it still spent most of its life without, with only six strings on it. I was kind of using it as a six string acoustic. The problem with that was, is that the neck was extra wide. So it was like a really hard acoustic to play. So I never became a, a you know, I, I almost, I don't think, I don't think I almost gave up guitar, but um, it was, it made playing not very much fun. And, um, and so um, when I got my first electric, when I was 13, that was when I really started to get into it more. I think it was a little bit, it, the guitar wasn't fighting me as much as it w had been prior to that. So my first acoustic was, or my first guitar was a three quarters 
uh, nylon guitar because I was nine years old. So they got a three quarters guitar and I don't have that one anymore either. I gave it to a, a missionary family way long time ago before I even moved to California. So I haven't, I haven't seen that. I don't even know where that guitar is. Um, I don't know what I did with the 12 string. I can't remember what I did with that. Um, but like I said, I don't even see one. I mean, maybe uh, if it's not, if there's not one on reverb, I doubt there'll be one on eBay, but maybe there's one on eBay. Um, but yeah. And so, um, so the, the, you know, the main 12 string to get for years uh, in the seventies was a guild 12 string and they make really good 12 strings. And it was like, you don't, you didn't see many guild guitars, but you saw a lot of guild 12 strings out there, like professionals using them. Also, Ovation made 12 strings that people seem to have. Nobody really played Martins. Anytime I ever played a Martin that was old, like a 12, like a 60s 12 string or a 70s 12 string, they played so difficult, like so hard to play. Because Martin always said, oh, you need to put medium strings on your guitars. And so a 12 string with medium strings is you just got, you got your work cut out for you. So um, I, uh, um, eventually when I was doing clinics for Taylor, um, I was able to get good deals at Taylor, and that's when I got that the, the Taylor 12 string because, and it was a return from a store. It had uh, what's called um, rack rack burns on it. You know, it was like in fact I don't I don't even see them anymore. I don't know what happened to them, but there were there were burns right here on the neck right there from hanging in the store, and the store returned it for whatever reason and or didn't you know and uh, and so. Um, it was a return and I got it for ridiculously cheap. Um, and so, um, but, um, um, but yeah, the, 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 um, what's the, um, the guild 12 strings, like Pat Metheny played guild 12 strings. Um, and, and my friend Carl Verheyen had a guild 12 string, uh, back in the day. But I, you know, like I said, I don't even before Taylor was even a company, I was like, I, I really had no interest in getting a 12 string. So when I, when I needed one, I actually talked to them and they, and I got this one. So, um, yeah, you, Paul Taylor. Yeah. It's setup is yeah. Very important. Um, definitely. Oh, boop, ba -doom, boom, boom. Okay. Sweet. Another client. Um, I'll tell you, it, it's been crazy during the, the uh, I don't need these up there right now. D oops, I don't need that either. Um, during the uh, lockdown, the gaming companies have just been still working like crazy because everybody can work from home in gaming companies. So I've been working for a lot of gaming composers lately um, and getting some new, a couple new clients, which is great. Uh, Fingo, yeah, Leo Kot, Gary, Gary Schultz, the, the, uh, Leo Kotke is a beast and he plays slide and 12 string. Yeah. Um, he, and, and I think, and in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think that, uh, John Denver used finger picks on a 12 string. So that when I first got 12 string, I had that, I had finger picks. And the funny thing was when I first got finger picks, I thought they went this way. <laughs> like they were supposed to model your nail, you know? <laughs> And it's like, it's impossible to play guitar with that. I'm like, wait a minute, how does, how does John Denver do it? You know, but uh, yeah, so I've never really ever played 12 string with finger picks. I can barely play banjo with finger picks. And I don't know where the heck my thumb picks are. That's the weird thing. Uh, my metal thumb pick. Oh, here's one. Here's another one. Well, look at that. Well, I was just looking for those the other day. Now I have them. Okay, cool. <laughs> my other pick drawer. So, um... Yeah, so the, the uh, but as far as all the 12 strings I've played, uh, the, for me, the easiest ones to play have been the, the, the Taylor ones. They just, they just are really set up really nice. But you could probably get any Martin set up that way. But again, Martins, they, they do say use medium strings on them. Um, and so that's going to make it harder. I've got lights on there. I don't have extra lights on there. I think I just have lights. Uh, the other reason I have lights on there is because is if you, you put too heavy strings on it, you're probably going to break that G string at some point. So... <laughs> I did find, I still haven't found my 80 tuners though, no. <laughs> and in fact, I gotta put a battery in this one. I got a battery, I got batteries. I just gotta, these things are impossible to get out of the package. It's like, how do you, what am I supposed to do? How, how do I get this out of here? It's like, ah. I got a 
a million slides too. Oh yeah, I forgot about this slide. Look at that. Cool little short glass slide. Um, yeah, because I did and then bar slides. These are great for that's I, I really this this is a great slide, although I still prefer prefer the Stevens slide. This one because it fits my hand better. This one for Dobro. Um, but at some point I gotta get my old I got a, a 1929 national duoli and I gotta get out of the closet so you can see that one. I haven't played that one forever. It probably definitely needs strings. Um, let's see. I walked out of Guitar Center almost buying a Tech Mini 12 string because it just played like butter. Then my buddy had an Alvarez he didn't want, so I picked it up for 120. Yeah, and spend another, you know, 70 bucks and get that thing set up and you'll have a, you know, gold. Um, you may need to buy another uh, electric fender, Becca Cat. What kind of a Strat or a Tele or? Uh, oh, you have a Gibson, oh, Gil, a Guild Bass, yes, with Flame Maple. Oh, yeah, I remember those. That's cool, yeah. Those Guild Basses are dope. Um, <laughs> Bruce, is, Bruce is frustrated with Gary's luck in guitar world. Uh, is it story time yet? Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll, well, and, and Bruce, one of the things that I've done, too, is I've always, you know, if there's a... I've always had guitar, you know, money set on a set set aside for a purchase. You know, if I if there's something of I find either a really good deal or a really good opportunity, I just I know I've got money. I can just go, you know, set aside for that specific um, purchase. I used to have a point um, that you know, if it was something that I liked and didn't have and it was under three hundred dollars, I would just buy it. Um, this is back back in the day, and I got my. I got a uh, Fender lap steel from the '40s for three hundred dollars because of that, and that thing's worth like fifteen hundred dollars now. It's crazy. Um, I got another one, a triple neck lap steel Fender, for like one hundred and seventy-five dollars. I just couldn't pass it up, so I bought it. <laughs> so, and that thing's worth like two grand now. Um, it's a triple neck, eight string. It's got twenty-four strings on it, and it's I, I don't have it set up because it's the it's like this big. It's, it takes up too much space. I can't have it set up. So I hardly ever use it. I mostly use it for um, weird effects and noises and things like that um, in this for for movies more than playing it because it's it's a non pedal. It's it's like a triple neck lap steel. It's like the weirdest thing. It's got a stand. It's got legs on it, so you don't have to you don't have to set this giant piece of wood on your lap. That would be horrible. Um, but let's see. Uh, um, yeah, in fact, the the guy I bought it from. Um, the guy that I bought that triple neck from was the, one of the one of the founders of Matchless Amps back in the day, and he left the company. And as part of his compensation, they gave him like twenty amp heads, like Matchless amp heads or amps. And so I bought one of those from him for a steal. I think I got it for third retail because um, he just had twenty amp heads in his condo, and he needed to get rid of them. And so I. I don't even remember where I, somebody knew him and they recommended him. He was in South Pasadena. So that was pretty cool. So that head I've used, I used to use a lot, the mar, the matchless head. I used to use it a lot. Um, it's called a club man head. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a very bright and gainy head. Um, I think it's, it may be 35 watts, but it, boy, it sounds like a hundred watts. It's freaking insanely loud. Um, Yeah, Gary, you could totally do that on a 12 string. The other thing is what, what I usually do is I usually make sure I have a, a pack of nines. Like uh, I'll buy like a six pack of nines to have and I put them in my 12 string case because I know it. Sometimes you'll just open up the case and that 12 string, that 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 uh, high G string is broken. Um, and that's just a drag. Um, yeah, I, yeah, the steel. The, and again, it wasn't a steel guitar because it didn't have pedals on it. Um, and at the time, I don't. it came with its original case. But somebody had tried it. I don't know what the original color was. It may have been, uh, what's that called? The Bakelite, uh, the the yellow. Somebody had tried to turn it into a sunburst, and they did a horrible job on it. So it's pretty heinous looking. 
Um, I don't know. I should probably at some point take it all apart and strip everything off, but I'm not that kind of guy. So <laughs> I just keep it the way it is. You know me, I don't make, I don't even change pickups out on anything. I'm just like, eh, if I don't like it, I'll put it in a closet. Maybe I'll like it a year from now. Um, but, uh, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, 12 strings definitely turn heads. Oh, oh, you're talking about the, the, the six, uh, the bass. Um, let's see. Uh, what else we got here? So, Oxy, what is that? Oxytaline torch. I had a band in high school called Oxy at Acetylene Torch. Torch. <laughs> Take a sip, everyone. That's one of the rules. If I say I had a band in high school called, and you get bonus points, whoever whoever provides me that band name gets to take two sips, and an extra bonus point. Of course, we're not keeping score, so. Um, oh, Ben took off. Shoot. You're welcome, Ben, but now you're not here to hear it. So, yeah, if you haven't hit the like button, go for it. Um, now it's story time, and I've got to think of a story. I don't know. Give me a subject. Um, what are we looking at here as far as... Okay, so we're, we're hovering around 46, 45 concurrent. Yeah, it's, we get to story time, and people start to tune out. By the way, Country Express was a band yet, yeah. That's not a bad band name, I guess. What would be, it would be a bad band name if you were a metal band. See, my wife and I, we had a band called Rumors of War, and that was because it was based on a scripture verse. But everybody thought we were a heavy metal band. <laughs> so they were disappointed. Come out to see us, and they're like, oh, you're not at all. You know, we're like kind of like alt country, alt, you know, kind of alternative uh, well, early on we were kind of like U2 with a female singer and then it kind of morphed more into kind of like, I don't know. I can't think of who, who we tried to sound like because we're trying to sound like ourselves, really. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll ask Jack about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So... <laughs> Oh, 75,000 points. So, yeah, awesome. So, subs. Yeah, but it's slowing down. The, the analytics are definitely, when I look at my analytics here, uh, 15,000 views in the last 48 hours, which is great. Uh, but it had gotten up into the 20s, like high 20s, like 26,000, 27,000. So it's definitely, it's definitely kind of settling a little bit. Um, and it will, will definitely go down when I stop doing these lessons. Which is going to happen, I just don't know when yet. Um, <clears throat> but uh, and then the revenue is heading downward too, which is you know it's all right. I fully expected. Uh, it's not wasn't going to stay up forever. Um, and a lot of it is still. I look at uh, probably you know 60, 70 percent of my views are from Seven Tips for Older Beginners. Um, so let's see. Anybody give me a subject for a, um, does my wife play? No, she doesn't play. Uh, she was a singer. Um, and, and so, um, oh, you're a country bluegrass guy. You played in a Christian praise band on Saturday, on Sundays. Yeah. Um, Barjonas. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Rick, you, we called, you called yourselves Barjonas. Oh, we need to be hitting the share button. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things too, too, if you're if you're regular on um, like different forums, uh, acoustic guitar forum or different forums, you can mention me. I uh, the other thing on Reddit, that's where I got a lot of subscribers way back in the day before I did the seven tips uh, for older beginners. Um, I got like eight hundred new subscribers in one day. Um, right now, the subscriber thing. Let's see. It says. Uh, 4,100 subscribers in the last, new subscribers in the last 28 days, which is great. But it had gotten up to about 5,000 in, in 28 days. So it's definitely settling down. Um, if I look at when I, the analytics here that they give you is so great. Um, I think there's a reach. Let's see, what, where would it be? Um, and 
impressions, engagement, audience. Um, oh, interesting. This is a new when your viewers are on YouTube. Yeah, it's all around noon, <laughs> of course, because <laughs> that's when I'm on. Um, watch time from subscribers. You know, the, the age, the biggest, it's 23%, but it's my age group, 55 to 64. Um, but I'm getting viewers in, in all age groups, so that's good. Um, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing new subscribers on a daily where that is or hourly or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still growing. So I'm thrilled. I, I'm just, I, I would love for it to get to that hundred thousand mark because, um, I would, uh, you know, the, the, um, I get that plaque. <laughs> so I want that plaque, man. <laughs> and you'll see it. It'll be probably, I'll put it right back here somewhere. So we'll, I'll find a place for it. I'll get it in shot. Well, it might be behind that door. That's probably where I'll put it over there. Um, so story, 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 uh, blah, 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 blah. Don't stop, please. <laughs> Here's a question. If you could sit down and have coffee with anyone dead or alive, who would that person be? Uh, I've thought about this before. I don't know. I, I, I want to say some intellectual like C.S. Lewis or Tolkien or somebody like that, but <laughs> it probably wouldn't. I don't know. I, I, I would just be, I would just feel stupid the whole time. Um, uh, you know, and the, you know, you, I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe you, Gary, <laughs> maybe I want to sit down and have a coffee with you. Okay. That was picking my teeth. <laughs> That's not touching my face. Um, but I'm still going to take a sip. Uh, subject topic, regrets or something that caused you to play, play the blues. Um, do I have any regrets? Well, yeah, I suppose I have some regrets, but, I, uh, you mentioned my name at Norman's Rare Guitars and it helped. That's hilarious. Um, I, I it's, uh, Jordan knows my son, Alex, uh, Jordan, uh, Norm's son. And Alex has done like played on some, some produce because Jordan is a producer and had Alex play on some stuff. And it was cool because I, they actually said, Hey, wh what do you want to play? What guitar do you want to play? And he went to the, went to Norm's. I think they went to Norm's in the middle of the night and they grabbed a couple guitars and took them to the studio. So Alex could play whatever he wanted for, <laughs> I don't think he grabbed a 59 Les Paul. I forget what it was, but um, how many episodes? What, did, what is that referring to? Oh, how, uh, today is episode 57. Can you believe that? I've been doing this for 57. Um, let's see. And what would I ask them? Yeah, I've. That's a that's a deep question, Gary. I'm not sure. You know, if I could have coffee with anybody, I'd probably want to have coffee with my dad. That, to be honest. Uh, I, you know, so that would probably, sad as that is, that makes me want to play the blues. Um, and then, uh, let's see. But I don't want to get too depressed here. Um, so, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of uh, let's see. Well, I mean, so Diane, I'm trying to think of something here. I, it's just usually I have something that, or, that just organically comes to mind when I'm when I'm doing these lessons. I remember playing with my band in high school, uh, <laughs> my band Rendezvous. And remember, I told you about Rendezvous. We got um, I got stolen from Rendezvous. In fact, they were so mad at me when I left the band to join a much you know like a much busier band. Um, but th we got signed by this booking agent in Indianapolis and he had about 30 bands. And of course he had a band and his band was the busiest and got all the best gigs because he was the booking agent and it was his band. And that band asked me to join them after they saw my band play a few things. He realized, Oh, we need a guitar player like Tom. So they brought me into the band and, um, uh, I had to quit my band and they were, they were pretty upset about that. I do remember um, that was a pretty big moment for me. Um, so I got, so the band that, 
that was the top band in the agency was a band called Malachi. And it wasn't a Christian band or anything like that, uh, even though it's, uh, that's the last book of the Old Testament. Uh, Malachi was a horn band, and, and so it was like we did funk and, you know, maybe disco. I don't remember doing any disco, but we did um, a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire and a lot of Commodores, like old Commodores, uh, back before they had a lot of hits, uh, but they did really funky songs. So we did a lot of Earth, Wind, they did a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire, Commodores. Um, I'm trying to think of what else was on that original set list. Um but they asked me, so they were they got a gig up at up at Culver Military Academy, uh, which is a school that I'm not sure there's I, somebody actually that was saw I was wearing a Culver shirt, and they said, "Did you go to Culver?" I don't remember who it was, um, but Culver, um, I think it's grade school through high school. It's not college or anything like that. And in fact, they wanted to film the movie Taps there with Sean Penn, but there weren't enough hotels. In the area, there are no hotels in the area, so they really wouldn't have enough, any places for the crew to stay. Uh, they would have had to kick everybody out of their houses in the neighbor, in the, in the whole city. And, uh, and even then, there probably wouldn't have been enough space for everybody to film a movie. So, um, But it's a beautiful lake in, in northwestern uh, Indiana, um, very remote, and a city called Culver and the military academy there. And um, so there was a dance that Malachi was playing at, and Malachi was booked for that dance as an eight-piece band, but they fired they fired one the guitar player, and they were going to fire the keyboard player, so they just didn't tell him about the gig. So, <laughs> so they they were they didn't want to show up as a six-piece for being booked as an eight-piece. So they said, just bring your guitar, and uh, you don't need to play. You just pretend to play. And I'm like, well, I wasn't going to do that. But they, they didn't even have a set list. Um, and they didn't have charts or anything like that. So I just went, uh, you know, I went with them. I rode up with them. I brought my amp and guitar and everything and pedals. And um, I think it was my Les Paul at the time I was playing. And um, uh, so I just kind of winged it. Um, I think Avito asked if I had perfect pitch. I don't have perfect pitch, but I have relative pitch you know if i if i know what key a song is in and you know uh, i can tell you what chords are being played um and so uh i kind of you know i was 18 i was in high school everybody in the band was 25 or older and the funny thing is the keyboard player they didn't tell about the gig somehow found out about the gig and showed up and like hey guys you forgot to tell me about the gig <laughs> so we ended up with an eight piece anyway and then i think they just wanted to just kind of like stop telling them about gigs and have it be the end of that. But they, I guess they didn't have the guts to actually fire them. But they fired the guitar player, and that was who I was supposed to sub for. And so I ended up playing the, the gig um, uh, really, really, you know, I guess I did a pretty good job. They, they dug, my, dug my chili, as they say. And um, so I specifically remember because I had been to Culver before as a kid um, many times. And there's basically there's Highway 31 that goes up the middle of Indiana. And there's Culver's over to the to the uh, an, a lake that's kind of oval shaped to the west of 31, pretty far north, north of Lafayette, south of South Bend. Um, and um, there's a road to the south that goes there and there's a road to the north that goes to the to there and the road to the north has a jog like it's a two right angles like this kind of thing and I'm riding back with the band and this is a road that I've taken before as a kid and I we get to that spot where you almost have to come to a complete stop because it's a right it's a total right angle make a left turn and in that little space there between the two right turns the two right angles uh, the bass player for the band, Bruce Weingart, he said, Tom, we want you to join the band. <laughs> it's so weird that I remember exactly where I was because it was a big moment for me. I was like, yes, this is, you know, this is my dream gig. At the time, it was kind of my dream gig. And I was, I, I got asked to sub out of the blue. And then I got asked to join the band right after the gig. So we're driving home from that gig and I got asked to join the band. And I said, yeah, are you kidding? Of course I will do it. Um, and, uh, and, and then I had to tell my band, I had to tell Rendezvous that I wasn't going to be doing it and doing them anymore. And boy, they got, well, the leader of that band got really mad at me. 
And I, that band kind of fell apart, but it was going to fall apart anyways. Everybody went off to college. So these guys were all after post-college and they were all, it was funny because Malachi, we had an attorney. We had, Bruce was a boiler maker, a literal boiler maker, not like a Purdue boiler maker, but he actually made boilers. Um, the sax player was a cobbler. He repaired shoes. Um, the drummer was a parole officer. <laughs> The other guitar player and singer was an orderly at a hospital. Um, let's see, what else did we have in that band? Um, yeah, it seems like... Oh, and then the, the leader of the band, the guy that had the music booking agency, was that, and then he eventually went into insurance. Um, but So I was the only, music, only full-time musician in the band. I was a guitar teacher, and I played with the band. And we rehearsed every Tuesday and Thursday night down in so south of Indianapolis in Southport. And we had gigs almost every Friday and Saturday night. So it was a it was a four night thing, a four night commitment. So it was a major commitment for me. So uh, so apparently there's a Vito has a, oh music school. Um, do, 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 do. Would you recommend someone go to music school now? Well, uh, well right now it's kind of weird with the coronavirus. Uh, would I do on online music school? I know a lot of people have gone to Berkeley online degree and everything. Um, and, um, is that a great story? I don't know if that was a great story, Diane, but thank you. <laughs> so I did do a video on this. Uh, I have a, ser a, a, a Vito, I think you would really like this. Uh, I have a, um, a playlist that I would love to make. I've got actually, I think titles for 70 videos. I've done 20, um, so far. Uh, and it's the, the playlist is called the business of making music. So here's the link to that. Um, and I talk about that very specific thing. Should you go to music school? Um, and so here's the playlist. Um, uh, and what I, what I would say is, sorry, my wife is doing some, moving some stuff around. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah, I've been, well, I've never been fired from a band. I've been fired from a lot of churches. <laughs> we won't go there, though. Uh, and that's not true. I say that, but I joke about that. Only happened once. I'm going to touch my face. That was, a, I was, a, I was taking a sip. It was a Pavlovian response. I took a sip and my nose itched. Um, uh, oh, music school. Um, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, I I will I will say this: one hundred percent, you should go to music school. One hundred percent. But here's the here's the thing: you should be the music school. In other words, never ever stop learning. Ever. I'm still learning. I'm. I'll be. Well, what am I? I'll be 59 this year, not 60. <laughs> so I got another year before I hit 60. Um, I am still learning, furiously learning. Um, I love learning. And so I think you'll find yourself in any profession. Um, and there are many professions where you only have to have this level of ability. And once you're there, you're fine. You don't need to, you know. But there are other professions where you get rewarded for being more excellent than you were the year before. And that's definitely true in my profession. Um, so I never, ever stop learning. Um, so I have two videos on that, in that playlist. One is, um, uh, it's, uh, and, it, and I would, uh, Vito, I would watch every one of these, okay? If you're thinking about being a musician. Uh, the number five is, the number one, five one is, uh, should you go to, should I go to music school? Let me just give you some of the, the I'll give you an overview of each of the videos real quick. Something to think about is basically, should you really do this or not? Okay. Or really the, the, the number one video there is really, um, is really about, um, and again, all of these videos could apply to any profession, I believe, um, for the most part, uh, except the, should I learn to read tab or, or I mean, learn to read music, you know, that may not apply to being a lawyer. Um, but, uh, the first video is be open to a different job. Okay, say you want to be 
I want to be the greatest guitar player in the world. But let's say <laughs> there's every guitar player in your town, like all the top guys are like way better than you. You just, you just can't get there. But you're really good at mixing records. Well, would you rather be like, like, how, how should I say this? Would you rather be, uh, I, here, I, it's, it's kind of one of these things, would you, would you love something that you do that no one's gonna pay you to do? And, and that may be true for a lot of things. You, no, most of you don't get paid to play guitar and you love it. Um, but would you, would you like a job, would you like a job that you didn't get paid for? Probably not. Would you like a job that people paid you a lot of money to do? Yeah, you're gonna find that you actually like working more than not working, if it's your passion. Uh, I talk about this in the, my video about p uh, tips for people with smaller hands. I say, look, making music is fun. You don't have to be a guitar player. You can play ukulele or bass if you have, or mandolin if you have a smaller hands and you can't play, it doesn't matter. Guitar, it's irrelevant. It's insert any instrument here. Enjoy music. If you just love music, it doesn't matter what instrument you play. And I think that's the overarching point that I make in that video. Same thing's true with the video one in my, my, uh, my business of making music playlist. Uh, the number two one is get in the game. Uh, and that one is basically whatever you do, no matter what, try to make all your jobs music related. I worked at a music store selling guitars. I worked at a record store selling records. But the music store was great because I could play guitar all day long and get paid to do it. Uh, the record store was good because I learned what records sold and what records didn't sell, you know, and I had access to lots of music and I was hearing music all the time and I was running into a lot of musicians when I worked at a music store. Teaching guitar lessons, I always talk about if you want to really learn something, teach it um, and so on and so forth. I've, I think in that video, I enumerate almost 40 different jobs in the business that I've done. And so if you take it and I, I've taken jobs outside of the music business and anytime I've done that, my career hasn't gone forward. So even the stupidest little job related to the music business can help propel, propel your, your, uh, your career forward. Uh, being in the right place. It, you know, Indianapolis is not the hub of music. There was only enough session work for one guy in Indianapolis to make 50000 a year. And in L.A., at the same time, there were probably 50 guys making over 50000 a year. So what I did was I moved to Los Angeles because I felt like I had a better chance of having a career there in music than I would in uh, Indianapolis. And uh, that's certainly been true. Um, number four is probably, in my opinion, the most important one, and that's live below your means. Um, whatever your job is, try not try to spend less than you, than you uh, make. Now, that, that does fly in the face of investing in your business. A lot of times when you invest in your business, you have to invest money you don't have yet. And that's difficult to do in the music business. Um, and I certainly showed up in L.A. with less better, you know, I, I showed up in L.A. with pretty bad gear to compete with people who had amazing gear. But at least I had savings. I had saved up specifically $10,000 to live on when I moved out here. My rent when I moved out here was $210 a month. So that $10,000 saved me, uh, bought me a lot of time in L.A. that if I had had to turn around and go home, um, you know, I wouldn't have been able to make it. So, um, let's see, number five, should I go to music school? And that's where I talk about it. You know, I did go to music school for one year, but I quit because my, my, I'm just not, that's not how I learn. My grades were awful. Um, I kept taking guitar lessons from my teacher and I stayed in the jazz band. Those are the only two things I did there that I really enjoyed and got something out of. Um, some people, you know, if I'd gone to Berkeley and Boston, which I wanted to, but I didn't have the guts to because I didn't want to move away from home. So that's why I went to Butler because it was close to home. Um, uh, and even then, it just was a last minute decision. Um, I was working at a Mexican restaurant. Um, and then I quit that job and started teaching at a guitar store. I only had four students. And I thought, eh, I better get a college degree. My mom was right. And then I went to college and she was so happy, but I only went one year. And because then by the end of that first year, in fact, before I got to college, that was when I got offered to join Malachi. So after I'd already been accepted at Butler, I got I asked to join Malachi. And then the music store I was teaching at just kept adding students and adding students. And I just could, it was really hard to keep my grades up. So, and I was already making music, uh, I mean, making a living in music. So I'm like, why am I going to music school? I'm already, 
I was actually making pretty good money teaching guitar lessons and playing in Malachi. Um, so, um, let's see. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, be your own college. That's number six. Uh, number So, when I... What I said is constantly be learning. You can learn, you know, if you know how you learn, you can learn so much faster than if someone's teaching you. If you, if you realize you're a real, I'm a real tactile learner. I really have to get my hands on it. Some people can learn a lot from just watching YouTube videos. Other people can learn immense amount of information by reading a book. You know, they have, uh, uh, you know, they can, uh, you know, they, what's it called? Photographic memory. Um, I, you know, I really just kind of need to get my hands on something. I, I learn software programs by messing things up and experimenting and all that. I can figure out any software program just by experimenting with it. Um, um, and so, you know, that's that's kind of where I'm there. Um, um, let's see. Uh, what's another video? The next video, number seven, my five reasons to take a gig. Okay, so basically I would, you know, have five reasons to take a gig. One, for the money. Uh you know, you're thinking two for the show now. One for the money, uh, one for experience. If it's a, you know, I need to get more experience in that area. It may not pay anything, but if I need to learn more, uh, like when I was playing classical guitar at a, at a restaurant, I played for tips and food. They paid me, they fed me lunch. But it was experience of playing classical guitar in front of people for an hour and a half every day. Five days a week I did that th at this time of day. It was like 11.30 to 1 every day in Pasadena at this restaurant. I did that for two years almost. And I was pretty, by the end of that, I was pretty fearless. Um, the other thing is, um, so it was it money, experience, connections. So a lot of times you'll take a gig because there's somebody you want to work with uh, or people that you haven't worked with before. I may get a call, I, you know, you would get a call to do a real book gig with three other musicians I've never worked with before. Well, if you do a good job, they're going to keep your number and recommend you for other things or bring you in on other stuff. So that's a third reason. Um, another reason is for friends, you know, doing favors for friends, uh, would do that sometimes because then they'll do a, you know, favor for you at some point. Um, and then for God is the other one. And I've done a lot of church work and things like that through the years, often volunteering and often getting paid. So, um, so those are my five reasons. You may have different reasons to take a gig, but those are my five reasons. Um, and that was video number seven. The video number eight is should I learn to read music? And it just depends, um, you know, if you want to be a professional musician, it doesn't hurt. It eliminates a lot. As far as any other instrument besides guitar and bass and drums, uh, it's a yes. Um, on guitar, bass, and drums, if you want to eliminate a lot of competition for some gigs, then do it. Because uh, I would say 20% of guitar players, professional guitar players, can read. Well, maybe not. Probably It's probably 50% of professional guitar players can read some music. Um, but again, you're eliminating 50% of the competition if you can read music and they can, if it's for a reading gig. Uh, the other one is guard your brand. Uh, yeah, don't send out demos too soon in your career. That's basically the lesson there. Uh, sending out demos too soon or crappy playing. I think I almost committed ca uh, a career suicide when I sent out demos of really bad recordings, really bad songs, really bad sounds, mediocre playing to every composer in LA <laughs> trying to get gigs. It was the worst thing you could do. So guard your brand. Uh, don't believe everything you hear, especially in Hollywood. Um, people are gonna lie to you and, get, and manipulate you to do stuff. You, you, uh, you, you, know, you think you're gonna be, have these big opportunities that never pan out. I talk about that. I talk about mailbox money, uh, which is writing and creating content that will generate money. YouTube is mailbox money. Uh, I talk about different types of film music, uh, because there's different ways you can make money writing music for film. It doesn't have to be the composer. There are needle drops, which are songs that are placed in movies. There's also things called source, which is if somebody's in a nightclub and um, there's music in the background, that's a source piece. So somebody has to provide that. And it's not always a pre-existing track. It can be some new thing that you create. I've done a lot of those. I've done some of my first uh, gigs writing um, music for uh, TV and film were for writing sources like a country song that's playing in someone's pickup truck while they're having a conversation. And they, it's really low in there, and it's Ch some Chet Atkins thing I wrote. Um, uh, and I talk about different types of TV music, things like that, uh, same kind of thing. Um, I talk about number 14 is what are PROs, and that's performing rights organizations like BMI and ASCAP and CSAC. They're the organizations that collect royalty money from you, for you. You have to be a member of that if you want to get money on your creations. Um, and it's free. Some of them are free. P uh, BMI is free to join. 
Um, let's see, making wish lists is number 15. I love make. back in the day I made wish lists. Uh, now it's, <laughs> I don't really have to say, so okay, I don't want to buy, tick you off, but if I just, if I need something, I buy it. That's, I'm in that position now in my career where I can do it. Um, but back in the day, there were a lot of things I needed that I just wanted to keep track of. I really would like to get a 12 string. I would really like to get a mandolin. I would really like to get a banjo. So I would put those things on my list and maybe I'd do a little research and say, oh, I really would like to get this specific mandolin or this specific banjo. Uh, but if it's on your wish list, you'll find that if you keep a wish list um, and you go back to it, you'll find that there are uh, things that you got that you went, oh, I, uh, um, and Avito is probably not even here anymore. He's probably, <laughs> Vito's, I'm doing all this talking for Avito. It's funny, but uh, 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 the, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, Vito, uh, you know, who knows if he's listening now. But anyway, um, let's see, what was it? Uh, yeah, making wish lists. So, yeah, that, you know, I, I just feel like, and it's encouraging when you look back on I me. Mean, and there's sometimes I'll look back on old wish lists that I still have, and I'll look back and go, why did I want that? I'm so glad I didn't get that. And then there are times where, oh, I got that, and I got that. Oh, cool, I actually got everything on this list. So that, you know, it can be encouraging uh, to, to have around. Um, what is another one? 16 is collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. <clears throat> um, and I found that when I was songwriting, I had no success as a songwriter when I was writing, doing all the writing myself. And my songs were babies and don't change them. And my songs were my babies, do not change them. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, um, uh, that's, a, that's a, you know, every, I, once I started collaborating, that's when I started to see some success. Um, and then I have one 17, uh, number 17 is what is sidelining. And that's when you pretend to play music on stage uh, in a movie or a TV show. I've done that a few times. And, it, and the nice thing about that, and it's hard to do if you live in Indianapolis. Um, but there is, you know, every city in the U S has a union musicians union. And so does, uh, sorry, everybody take a sip. I touched my face. So if you're a member of the local musicians union, um, you, you might be able to find out if there, you know, there's a way to find out, I'm sure if they're filming something locally and if they need musicians locally, the great thing about those gigs is that you're basically an extra it pays a little bit more than an extra, but unlike extras, there's no back end. Um, the only extras that make money in a, like in a movie, I think, is it 20% of extras have to be SAG or AFM? I mean, SAG or, and it's 10% in a TV show, they have to be SAG. So some extras are union and they do get back in, um, but uh, very few. But but the musicians, you do make back end. So I've done gigs where I got paid $300 or $180 for a day, which is less than I would make just teaching guitar lessons back when I was teaching. Um, but in back end, I've made five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars and, you know, every year money comes in. So, um, so that's why, you know, you, you do sideline, but it's hard to do outside of... Um, you got to stop touching your cup. Yeah. See you later, Jim. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going on about this. Let's see. Uh, the number 18 of this, I think it was the last one I did, um, was, uh, and I have a couple others in here. What is Nam? These are not specifically the business of making music ones though, but I talk about the real book gig and that's where you just, you know, if you're a reader, you can and play jazz, you can do real book gigs. So, um, Paul, you were saying that uh, you do. Um... Oh shoot! Yeah, I've got to go too. I forgot. I got a thing at at one. <laughs> Paul, your wife keeps. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, you you do background music. You do music music. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've played on some of that stuff, uh, and um, I sometimes hear it. It's funny. I'll sometimes hear, "Oh, that's I do remember doing that." Um, and those, uh, there is no back end on those. If they're not union, you don't make any money back end on those. But I got paid like the the few that I've done. I, the guy always paid me really well, so um, it was kind of a buyout thing. Uh, my son Alex is doing that right now with for Disney. He's doing a buyout thing for them. Um, but anyway, so. Um, Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Uh... All right. 
Yeah. Oh, Paul, that's a great, yeah, surround yourself with better players. It's like playing, I always use that example, you know, playing tennis. Um, uh, you know, I always play better when I play somebody that's better than me. But if they're a lot better than me, then that's not going to happen. But if they're a little bit better than me, then it's great. Same thing's true with playing music. So anyway, I am going to sign off and we will talk hopefully tomorrow, Lord willing. And um, I will try to uh, um, do some some six, eight um, examples in um, in finale so that you can we can have some examples to look at. OK. All right. So God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bruce, you're retracting your own messages. <laughs> um, and let's see, what else? Okay. Yep, everybody take care. God bless you. And um, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pick up. Uh, we'll pick up uh, where we, uh, we'll try to pick up where we left off. We'll continue working on strumming and grooving. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.